In the last video, we created a text element to highlight an important number on our dashboard. Now we're going to take that one step further with a quarter over quarter calculation we can use in both a text element and a bar chart. For comparisons over time, you can generally use table calculations, which we'll cover later in this course, but since we only want to display the value from a single point in time, tied to our report date parameter, a few easy calculated fields are, I think, the most straightforward way to go. Remember that there's usually more than one way to achieve the same result, so by learning multiple methods you can apply the best fit to each of your projects. To get started, we'll need four more calculated fields. First, let's create a new sheet. We need to first identify the prior quarter sales. We've got in report quarter, so why don't we duplicate this and we'll create in prior quarter. So we'll right click on the copy, click edit, and let's name this in prior quarter. Now to make it reflect the prior quarter, or one less quarter than the quarter selected, we'll do a date add function, date add quarter, negative one, to the report quarter. And if you click on date add, it'll give you the syntax down here. It adds an increment to the specified date and returns a new date, so we're subtracting one quarter from report quarter. So this function will return true when the order date is in the quarter prior to the selected report quarter. Let's take a second to view the data to get a closer look at what this is doing. Just go up here to the View Data button. We can see there's the in report quarter and the in prior quarter. Here as we scroll down the order dates, we can see a group here turn true when they're in our report quarter here. And then a group here is in the quarter prior to our report quarter, so they're true and the rest of the data is false. Next, we'll create a sales in report quarter field. Right click, create calculated field. Let's call this sales in report quarter. And we just want to make a simple if statement. If in report quarter. So if that is true, then return the sales. And this will give us a, either sales if it's in the report quarter or null if it's not. And then hit OK. Then let's duplicate this. And with, we'll edit the copy. And instead of in report quarter, we'll change it to in prior quarter. And we'll say sales in prior quarter. This will return sales for any of the orders that take place in the prior quarter. Otherwise, it'll be null. And then we'll make a final calculated field. which will take our sales in the report quarter and then divide it by the sales in the prior quarter. We want to use the sum function. So we're going to use sum of sales in report quarter divided by sum of sales in the prior quarter minus one. Let's call this sales growth QOQ for quarter over quarter. And then we'll hit OK. Let's go ahead and view our data again to see how those calculations manifest themselves. So we're looking for sales in report quarter and sales in prior quarter. Here you can see both of those fields. Those should all be null except for the months that they correspond to. So as we scroll down here, we should see their sales in report quarter. And now there's some sales in the prior quarter. Those should correspond to the actual order dates that are either in or out of our report quarter. So now let's drag out sales growth, QOQ. So we can see we have 19% growth quarter over quarter for the selected quarter. Let's fix the formatting by first right-clicking our sales figure tab and click copy formatting. Then right-click paste formatting onto our new sheet. 
So we've got the same size and font face and many other attributes are able to be copied straight over that way, but some attributes are not. Just something to be aware of. So let's go ahead and format this as a percentage. Right click on it, click format, and go to fields and sales growth quarter over quarter. Under default, we want to choose percentage. Let's go ahead and set it to one decimal place. But when it's positive, we want to show a plus sign in front instead of just a non-signed number to show that it's actually an increase. So we click on custom. It'll give us the format that it's already applied. We can change this format to, for a positive number, we want a plus in front. Then add a semicolon and type in the format we want for the negative number, which would be negative 0.0%. If we wanted to also indicate the format for exact zero number, we could type anything we want here. We could say 0% change, or we could say no change, whatever we want to do. I'm going to go ahead and not worry about it for this. Now let's give it a meaningful color scale. I'm going to hold control and drag sales growth to color. That's going to create a copy. So in addition to being on the label, it's also going to drive the color. Click the down arrow in the legend. Click edit. We want this to be red green diverging. We want to use advanced. Let's use stepped color with two steps. So we can use this red for one end and this green for another end. We want it to start at, let's say, a negative one. We'll end at positive one. And the center should be at zero. So now any negative numbers will be red, any positive numbers will be green. And hit apply. So now our number is green because it's positive. So now we can head back out to our dashboard and drag this sheet out onto the canvas. We'll close our formatting panel and drag sheet two right underneath sheet one. We'll right click and hide the title. We can also hide the legend because red green is self-explanatory. And then we can drag out another text box as a label. We'll just say from prior quarter. Of course, change it to trebuchet and bold. So now we've got these annoying boxes around our numbers. We can right click and click format, go up to the borders, and then for these are called row dividers and column dividers. And we'll set these to be none. And those go away magically. We'll do the same for this sheet. None and none. Beautiful. So to recap, we use the date trunk and the date add functions in calculated fields to determine the rows we want to compare. Then we used an aggregate function, sum, in a calculated field to compare the two time periods. In the next video, we'll leverage these quarter over quarter fields to make a comparison chart.